started it. But we did not record much from this past week. Yeah, we uh, we had an interesting incoming into Bradenton Beach area. Interesting. It was awful, traumatic. Um, if you guys were aware, Hurricane Ian did come through Florida. We are we were based out of Fort Lauderdale, meaning that's where we lived before we transitioned. Um, we have been together for six years now, seven years? In that area, yeah. Something like that. We were both working at the same law firm. Yeah, for our honeymoon, we went uh, on a road to a two week road trip through California, coastal California. Well, Yosemite, coastal California. It was awesome. Uh, we stayed at a lot of different hotels. That part was not as awesome, but being able to explore everything and kind of doing the road trip. Oh, it was our honeymoon. It was amazing. It was great. Yeah. Um, and that kind of opened our eyes to how much we love traveling, how great we travel together. And how much we like national parks as well. Yes. Um, so ever since then, that was July 2021, we've kind of been angling our lives towards this. Um, so we first started saying, okay, our weekend vacations, our long-term vacations are going to be... National parks. National parks. Let's start hikes. knocking them out. Let's do some hikes. We loved it. The beauty is is fantastic. So we did some of that, but that, that proved to be very time consuming, very expensive, and also impractical because as holidays come about, it's like your family wants your time. They want you there, of course. And so it's like you end up having limited bits of time to work with to try to accomplish that. And there are certain areas of the country that are just not accessible for a long weekend. It doesn't make any sense. So in October 2021, mm -hmm. we both uh, left the company that we were at and we took a little hiatus. We, we started looking for jobs, you know, maybe a month or two later. We knew it was the end of the year. We knew we wanted to spend time with our family and the holidays without a job. So we did just that. Um, it Highly was recommended if you have the means and are able. If you are able to take a break, do it. Um, it is a mental health like reboot. It, it was amazing. We went on a nice cruise. We found out we love cruising as well. Um, and uh, then we started looking for our new jobs as soon as 2022 came on board. And we were both very successful in finding the positions that we were happy to uh, be a part of, companies that we were happy to be a part of. Yeah, a lot less misery in our lives. Um, uh, some, some freedom in terms of being able to work remotely. So we both now work remotely from home and we were in an apartment in Fort Lauderdale and after a couple of months of doing that we were kind of got I don't know who started looking at RVing I think it was me I think I got I got sucked into the idea somehow and then we came across YouTube channels um, and, then and we, just we will say it, keep we, your daydream KYD KYD Mark and Trish or Trisha they have totally inspired us to do what we are doing right now and also to like document it as we go. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, again, we were already kind of inspired to do this. I think what Mark and Trish really did and what their platform enables you to do is it, it makes you realize that it's possible for you to, to do it too and it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to not know what you're doing. Um, so yeah, big, big thank you to them. We got completely addicted to their channel. Absolutely addicted. Uh, we watched the entire thing, every episode. We feel like we know them, as I'm sure many, many RVers do. Yes. Uh, there are lots of great resources out there, but none that are that are that seem like as as much as family as as KYD. Right. Weirdly. Right. Uh, it, it is a little awkward because you you know that you feel like you know them, but to them they don't even know who you are. Yeah. And it's, like it's just you, a testament to how well they do and, and, and how good they are at what so they do. So they are absolutely, we're, we're not trying to compete with them in any way. <laughs> this is mainly for us to see if we can really just do it. Um, and to keep our family uh, aware of what we're doing on a weekly and basis. And also for us, it, it, it'll be nice, um, you know, in years ahead to look back and kind of rewatch some of the conversations we had. Some right, of the, right. The tribulations we dealt with. So the difference with us, though, is that we have active jobs where mm. Monday to Friday, you know, 8 to 5, roughly, um, we are actively working. So we don't 
we don't get the pleasure of going to the national parks during the week unless it's early in the morning or in the evening. Or unless we, um, we plan some time. Unless we plan some time off. Doing. Um, um, so as we go, it's it's our our focus is where can we go where we'll still have um, cell signal. Where, where can we actively work without interrupting our, our work schedule, you know, and communication with our jobs. So that is, that is as we did research on where we want to go and, and what kind of campgrounds and RV parks we want to stay at, that was a big piece, a big factor of where we stay. Um, and so this week we stayed in Bradenton Beach. Yep, um, Buttonwood RV Resort. Buttonwood Resort. Inlet RV Park in Cortez, Florida. A mile away from Bright at Bradenton Beach, um, it's it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, not like the craziest amenities, but you don't need them. Um, the, the the rigs that are there are very gorgeous. nice. They're gorgeous. Nice people. Good mix of people. Super friendly. Good spot. Good spot. Um, for sure. Do you want to talk about how we got here? In a minute. Okay. Our primary reason for coming here. So we've been living in our in our 30-ish foot um, travel trailer for a little over a month now. Ever since well, you've probably seen, maybe you've seen the last video. That was our our hitch install and our picking up process and and our really the start of our learning curve um, with us first having possession of the trailer. So we've been living in it ever since, kind of doing some light traveling to get the the hang of it. All right. There we go. We are at our first campsite. Jonathan is checking in. There's a giant storm. Like a giant storm. That is rolling in. So hopefully we can get this done sooner rather than later. Although again, do not know what we're doing. But at least we got snacks. We practiced backing up today. That was successful. It was last night. Trying to fine tune our parking situation in front of our apartment complex. Did not go great. We were able to do it. Just something simple. It took too long and really revealed our language challenges. We really, while John and I are great at communicating, we kind of developed the back and up language. It's very easy to say things like your side, my side left or right without any context and that's really not helpful when you're backing up a trailer so we worked on that today and it went really really well i promise you that will not be the last time you see me eat on camera yeah we took a we took a test run yeah. Um, I'll probably show some clips here and there. Up to um, Georgia. So we went up to Georgia. It was my cousin's baby shower. So we took the opportunity to just go ahead and take a trip up. So Quick we, back up here. In, in, in Jonathan's family, men go to baby showers. Absolutely. Everyone tradition. goes to baby showers. There's not a, it's out. not a girl thing, a guy thing. It, it's, it's just, we just all go. It's a family thing. It's a drinking thing. Um, it's totally a drinking thing. So we definitely drove up. We, we drove from Oakland Park or Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We stayed the night on the Georgia-Florida line at a perfect KOA that's right on the, uh, on the state line there, right off the interstate. And then we did the next day, and we stayed at Stowe Mountain Park. It was a beautiful, beautiful campground. Beautiful campground. Stayed um, at the state Right park off there. the lake. Uh, you can see the mountain from most, some of the sites. I won't, I won't say all the sites, but most of the sites. Then we and, went to Savannah. Thank you, people. Thank you, stone people. Mucho aficionados. Then we drove down after the family. We, we drove down to Savannah. Uh, go see my best friend, uh, Devin, who was our officiant, officiant during our wedding. Um,
<laughs> I wish we could put the camera on it. Looking good. Can you tell me what the, you tell me what the trailer tires are like really pads so I can start making them like, Yeah. Maybe like five or four feet away. Yes, I can do that. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I think I should start now. I, yeah, yeah, there you go. Good, good. Now you're five feet away. Keep moving. Yep. Now you're right at the pad. Keep going, keep going. You're lined up. Lining up very well. You are. If you just keep going straight, keep going, keep going, keep going, straighten all the way out. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. All right, go to the right a little bit. Roger Gamble's. One then we did Roger, Roger Gamble's on the Florida beach. Highly Looks, recommended. We if, went there. We found one a site that was canceled. That, that place is booked like a year out. You get sites right on the beach, like in the St. Augustine area, maybe just south of it. It's absolutely. Beautiful. If you get um, ever get the opportunity to to stay there, please do. But if you are in the area, just call. See if they have cancellations. You might get a night or two. Yep. Uh, we that's, got that's all we needed was one night, and it was it was perfect. Yeah, really it worth perfect. it. had an apartment and we needed to get out of the apartment that was what was keeping us tethered. keeping us tethered to Fort Lauderdale before starting this trip back at Easterland Park no hiccups things going pretty well turn this camera on pointing it in this direction so that I can catch every eye roll as I direct Jonathan to our parking spot um, we originally thought we might do this trip in like December, January, but it ended up being uh, a lot earlier, which is okay. We, I mean, made, we, we had made, the rig. We had the trailer. We had the truck. We never, our once, apartment. Once we stayed in the trailer, I think the, right, the first day after we got it back, we brought it back. We put it in front of our apartment building. We slept in our beds that night in our apartment. Then we brought it to the campground the next day. We slept in it, and we never, ever slept anywhere else again. August 12th, 13th, yeah. something yeah. like that. So we've been uh, living and sleeping in our trailer since August, mid-August. Um, today is October 8th, mm -hmm. so we're a little under almost two months, two months yeah. almost two months in. And we are already on the road uh, moving. So we, we did kind of have a slight path that we're headed around. Um, we did a lot of a late night weekend where we planned our path. Yeah, our, our, our priorities are, are, as Jonathan mentioned, making sure we have internet connection, whether it's cell service, Wi-Fi, or Starlink, because we do have Starlink. Um, and we, we found that it's actually quite reliable as long as there are no trees around. Um, like we can totally both work off of it during the day seamlessly. And play video games at night. And play, and play video games. 
Uh, that's a great product. So that's one of our priorities. The other priority is weather. Um, we're trying to avoid the freezing cold weather. We do not want to deal with snow and ice. Um, just not interested, not right now anyway. Um, also don't want to deal with sweltering temperatures. So we have a dog with us, Lucas, our miniature schnauzer. Um, so as we go explore and do things, he'll be staying in the rig. So we want to make sure that we're hooked up. We have reliable power. Um, we don't want to necessarily need the AC blasting, so we don't have to rely on the power. So we're just looking to stay in moderate climates, kind of follow the 67 degree weather as much as we can. So we'll be hugging the southern coast, going west through the winter, staying in that southwestern part of the country until the, the weather turns, and then we'll start going up through Utah, doing the national parks there, and up to the Canadian coast. And we'll see if we do BAM for anything this year. We'll see. So going back to weather, well, as as we started hearing about you know tropical storm and Hurricane Ian as it was building its strength and headed towards Florida, we thought we might have to evacuate Fort evacuate Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale and start our trip two weeks early, um, which and we were prepared to do. So we got out of our apartment as quickly as possible. Instead of hiring a company, we just did it all ourselves. We we. You know, we sized down as much as possible, um, put, a, put our storage in it, uh, got it filled up with what we wanted to keep, and we, we handed the keys over. So we uh, were ready to go, but luckily, um, unfortunately for us, we, were, we did not have to evacuate. The, the weather wasn't too bad. It was no, windy. For um, long, the sub southeastern corner of Florida really got scared. I will say it was still dangerous since we I'm rolling through this. Um, we had we had tornadoes in the area um, but it wasn't anywhere near us um, but in a hurricane weather environment area like something like that that's, that's always the possibility you don't want to be so on wheels when we there's saw a, hurricane a lot or a of people around. did leave um, but the campground did not force us out the rule there was if it's a hurricane if warning. it's a hurricane warning then you're, you're you get kicked out um, so we only made it to a tropical storm warning um, which was fine. We were Honestly, fortunate. we were very fortunate, even though there was trees in the area. So. But on the west coast of Florida, like the Bradenton Beach area and Fort Myers and realistically, Sanibel. Sarasota, Fort Myers, Sanibel, yeah. Captiva. That Island. is where the eye of the storm went, and it, it really, really that area got hit bad, and it went inland, and there was a lot of flooding. And I, I think a week later, there's still a lot of flooding in some areas. So that hit on Wednesday. Yes. Wednesday. Yeah. So shall we recap our day so far? We're having an amazing day. Not a great first day. Also, not our first day, really, but... Day zero. Day one of... Day one of event. our adventure. But two months into testing, practicing, living in the RV. And day one, we decide to go to a disaster area where there is no gas. So, what was a three and a half hour drive has turned into a... Six, six seven. Six to almost seven six, hours. six to seven hours now. Yep, we made it most of the way there, really eager. And like, oh, we'll just stop and get gas and then float the rest of the way in. Yeah, no, we, we made it to gas lines like a bunch of idiots. Um, oh, by the way, we're going to Fort Myers where Hurricane Ian just hit three days going ago. To Bradenton, <laughs> the Bradenton Beach area. Yes. So our resort is open where we have reservations to stay at. Oh, and we uh, messaged them on Facebook. They said, come on in, we'll see you Saturday. So that's why we're going. And then we told them we would assist with cleaning up and helping, you know, as much as we can yep. this weekend. And then Monday through Friday, we worked like normal. And then we're gone again on Saturday. They announced that they had power. So we were pretty optimistic that things would be normal. And we just did not take into account that what usually happens around hurricanes, and like honestly, like we should, we know this, we know this. People go nuts about gas, people don't have gas, the gas pumps are down because the electricity's down, and I guess we were just overconfident in that particular area because the campground had power, and the whole area was fine, even though like honestly, we just been staring at the news watching this. Right. Just look, opening up Gas Buddy on our way here, we would have known that there was no gas. That's, that's a gas tank.
Yeah. Far. Yeah. Well, I didn't uh, see the other side of the road, did you? Yeah, oh yeah, it wasn't that far. It was like, uh, from here to that, like, increase. But uh, it was, like, a, just a big dip, and it was, like, a lake in the middle, and two cops in there. So we couldn't, so we do a U-turn, and then the road so that the Google Maps actually wanted us had a road close sign on it. Yes. So Google Maps, shame on you. Yeah, and it still tells us to go that way. And it's currently telling us. So, but we, at that point, we needed gas. So, I mean, that was hours ago. So we turned around, we went back, then we got into gas buddy mode, tried to find something around us. Found something that was updated, like, within the past five minutes. So we went there just to find, like, a mile-long line that we started to approach and then quickly realized it was a one-lane road that we were not going to be able to do a U-turn on with a 30-foot travel trailer. So we instead turned into a Walmart parking lot, which was completely completely taken up with RVs, uh, tractor trailer trucks, just rigs lined up everywhere. It was completely impassable. We made it down one long aisle thinking we'd be able to get out just to have to back down the entire thing. I backed out. Jonathan backed out. It was a big success. The only reason we even went there was to pull over and put like some of our excess five gallon. So we had five in. gallons of gas in the back. That was our emergency and we had to use it. And we we needed had it. to use it. So, looking at the map and where we were planning on going, and now with, like, Gas Buddy in mind, we realized it didn't really make a lot of sense for us to continue heading towards the campground. We didn't have enough gas to make it there, uh, and we weren't finding any gas stations in the area that even had gas. So then we decided the best route was to backtrack and go as far back as we could where we came from originally, because uh, that area was not affected by the hurricane. So we did that as far as we could, and I think we made it to about 19 miles left in our gas tank before we found a gas station that had a relatively small line, could accommodate a 30-foot trailer, not easily, uh, but could accommodate it. And so now we have turned around and are heading back in the direction we were originally headed. We've done all of this before. We've made very little progress. <laughs> yes, sorry, I was trying to get around some people. And I'm um, still not entirely certain that we have a, a route that'll bring us there. Still not entirely certain there is a route there right now. So right now Google Maps has an alternate route, so we're taking that. Waze confirms. We have no idea. Uh, if the, the same kind of route. We so don't know like, if the state has like a, their own detour on the, like when you get off 95, uh, 75. Um, so we're hoping for the best right now. It says 97 miles to go. But honestly, at this point, we have a full tank of gas, and we filled up our reserve. So even if we're not able to make it, I, I at least feel comfortable that we can go somewhere. If not, we have gas for a generator. Yep. We have a little bit of water. We have food. We have everything and we need we survive. to make it through the night if we needed to. Just yeah. park somewhere. That was not the case 15 minutes ago before we got gas. That's true. <laughs> and now that we have gas, we're good. Uh, Monday, the reason we're going to this area, despite the hurricane, we don't love to go to natural disaster areas, but the reason we're going there is because we have to bring the RV to the dealership on Monday in Dover, which is about an hour away from our park. Uh, because the, <laughs> the battery, although it works, doesn't actually bring power to the panel inside. So while we can work just fine while we're connected to shore power, as soon as we unplug and try to switch to battery, it does absolutely nothing. Uh, we can run things off the battery if we connect it directly to it, like a compressor. Um, but the main line that's that's installed, some, it's disconnected. It, it got disconnected or cut somewhere beneath the floor and the belly of the rig. So we're going to bring it there on Monday. So that's why we're going here, and that's why it would be especially bad if we ran out of gas and had to boondock somewhere in the middle of South Florida where it's 90 degrees. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to use our AC or anything. Or anything, and that'd be really bad. We'd just be truly camping at that point. Uncomfortably camping.
came back and completely disregarded it. 75 was just open. It, you could tell it was flooded at one point, probably earlier today. I have no idea when. But, like, some of the off-ramps were closed with cars just, like, underwater. <laughs> like, very underwater. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Um, like, just, like, pointed down in ditches. Um, not sure how they got there. It almost looked like they floated there a little bit. Oh, that roof is completely gone. Horrible. Like, ripped, peeled off. Anyway, we saw a lot of terrible stuff on our drive here. I think we drove through where the, the eye of the storm went. Um, and then once we got north of that point, it's like there's not nearly as much destruction up here. Um, not as much flooding either. So, there's also gas stations that are open. So, we're kind of kicking ourselves wondering, like, if we had just gone through and disregarded Google Maps, would 75 have been open? If not, would we have been able to do the detour? Would we have made it to these open gas stations with no lines before we ran out of gas? A lot of ifs, I'm not really sure. But at least we have more than half a tank right now and we're almost there, so. It was just an all day drive. Yeah, and that roof is. Oh wow, on the, on the power lines. And they have power in the house right there. Oh wow, <laughs> do you see that? He was like watching TV. No. Who would be watching TV in a house? Like he was that, watching a TV. A house without a roof. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, difficult things today. Difficult things. What else do we see that was creeping? We saw a lot of like disaster restoration vehicles, a lot of National Guard, a lot of police officers, and the creepiest thing a lot of ambulances. Just ambulances. Everywhere with you their know. lights on, a lot of them. You don't know if they're going or coming. Did you or... see the line of them? Yeah, there was like one where there was like 10 or 20 in a yeah. row, they're all just following each other. It's like, where are you going, and why are there that many people that are like that need that help? Oh my god, like, or dead? How does that work? The storm was days ago. It's so well, well, we saw driving through that section from the last time we recorded like, them we to now. Really, still just finding people. I mean, I believe it. Did you see that flooded area? It's like they were all homes. Those homes were still in water. Gosh. And like when there's that much water, it's like they had airboats. Oh, that's another thing we saw where a lot of pickup trucks carrying, towing airboats on trailers going really fast through water. They must just drop the airboats off with people and just go on like rescue missions. Yep. Because you can't drive through these neighborhoods. I don't know how expansive those neighborhoods are or where they go. There's a whole exit. A whole exit. Interstate exit. So, Bradenton Beach. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Once we got there, the park is great, like we said before. Um, had a good week. Yeah. Work was fine. Um, we were able to, to enjoy a couple walks to the beach, walks on the beach, see the sunset. Uh, and, and it was nice. It was very nice. Yeah, I would. Tree fell on it. Yeah, tree fell on it. Um, we would definitely go back. curse that time. No. <laughs> that's that's an update. That's that's our, that's our update. So we are headed to Devil's Den Springs. Um, Prehistoric so Springs. We'll, we'll probably get some some footage of the water and yeah. the springs we see this week. So. Yeah, but we don't actually expect to hit any national parks until we get to Texas. We get to Texas on Big Bend. We were considering Hot Springs National Park. I guess we still arguably are. But after researching it, whew, it does seem boring. Wow. Alright guys, well, thanks for listening. We will see you next week. Yeah, or like later in the episode when we show stuff. Like of us driving. Or swimming or snorkeling. What? Okay. Be snorkeling in Devil's Den. Okay. It's a scuba place. Bye.